responsibility for making the line look worse than it played, and that's exactly the kind of thing that causes him problems in the locker room. Reed wrote on Twitter after Griffin's press conference that coaches say several offensive linemen dislike Griffin. Skip, what does this say about RG3? Stephen A., now we got to get real serious. I know we had some fun with that topic. Not that yeah, I'm not absolutely. serious about my reservations about Andrew Luck, but I'm dead serious about this. Gotcha. This tells me that Robert Griffin III is even in more trouble than I suspected he was in in D.C. We've heard bits and pieces about this come out before, about how some teammates in that locker room, we have been told, reportedly had issues with the RG me in RG3. All the self-promotion, the, the brand promotion, sometimes the blame deflecting. And it rubbed them the wrong way. It alienated some. You have emphasized the incident, was it two years ago in the Philly game? Remember that when none of his teammates would help him up? And finally, one of the Eagles reached down and said, I'll give you a hand and help you up. Wow. Well, here we go again. In Stephen A., everything that, that happens to Robert is self-inflicted to me because it's what's coming out of his mouth. I'm assuming some of those offensive linemen were a little upset, if not alienated, by the fact that Robert, in his interviews, indicated, well, we didn't block very well. And I'm just paraphrasing how it would come across. But instead of taking all the blame on himself for his poor performance, and, and you, you were the first to, by the way, jump out there and say he deserved a break because they didn't protect him that night. They were without their starting left tackle. What is he, a two-time pro bowler and Trent Williams? He came back to practice this week. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to play on a sprained foot, so that could put RG3 in jeopardy again, obviously, tomorrow night in Baltimore against those not-in-such-a-good-mood Ravens at this point. But it's coming across through his interviews that he will not accept full blame for his poor performances that can be as you well know from all the teams that you have covered that can be lethal in a locker room everything keeps coming back to what robert says i keep saying stop talking you need to put your so to speak money where your mouth is your performance where your mouth is you need to let your actions speak from here on you don't need to speak much at all, but he insists on speaking, even though they're trying to curtail it to just once a week. Yep. And yet, in his once this week, Stephen A., I'll just, I'm probably reading between the lines, but Robert threw out this cryptic reference to how he didn't even know he had a concussion, that he went in after he got hurt, and they pulled him finally after he got rocked. He said, I took a shower, and I was preparing to watch the rest of the game in the locker room, and they came in and told me, oh, we need to enforce the concussion protocol here. And he dropped the hint publicly that they say I had a concussion when maybe I didn't have a concussion. It's always Robert versus. Robert versus the head coach. Robert versus the executives. Whoever it is, it, it's always drama. Daily drama and crisis with RG3 instead of daily performance by RG3. So, again, this is just another indication to our point yesterday, thanks to Joe Theismann, that tomorrow night in Baltimore is going to be the biggest game of Robert Griffin III's career. Skip Bayless, <clears throat> what shocks me about this subject matter is that it's news. Because as we've watched this offensive line, have they been anything short of offensive? I mean, True. I agree. Let's, let's take into consideration. I, what I would say to you is that let's be careful about accusing them, however, of intentionally being negligent in their responsibilities. They just may not be very good. This is a team that gave up true in RG3's nine starts last year, seven starts last year, nine games he played, he was sacked 33 times. 33 times in seven starts, okay? Okay. Nine games overall, seven starts. But then you look down, Skip. Colt McCord played five games. Yep. Started four. He was sacked 17 times. Overall, the Redskins gave up 58 sacks last year. 
Do you know how sorry you have to be to give up 58 sacks? I don't care if the if the if the quarterback is holding on to the ball too long because he's shopping for Christmas presents, sitting there ordering Thanksgiving dinner to be catered, chilling out, calling his woman and saying, "What's up, baby? I miss you." I don't care what he's doing. Fifty-eight sacks. You know how bad you have to be to give up fifty-eight sacks. I mean, Molly, can I get an amen? I mean, good lord. Amen. Fifty. 58 sacks. You've got to really stink up the joint to give up that many sacks. Yeah, so witness. again. So again, that's right, be a witness, amen. The point is this, if you're gonna give up that many sacks, it's hard for me to say that, oh, you got an issue with RG3. You might just have an issue with doing your job because it's just too damn challenging because you, you clearly ain't good at it as a unit. Now, when it comes to RG3, you're right, Skip Bayless, gotta keep it, gotta, keep, gotta pipe it down, gotta, Understand that when you are the quarterback and you are the leader, you got to take blame even when it ain't yours to take. That's right. Because that's what leaders do. That's right. He does have to understand that. Yeah. He has to grow. He has to recognize that, look, people going to say stuff. You just got to eat it. You just got to take it. Yep. There's nothing you can do about it, period. I don't blame him one bit, Skip, for speaking up for himself when there are those who attack him personally, like personally lying about his character, lying about his actions off the field or something along those lines. That's different. No, you can't let that happen if you can avoid it. You got to speak up for yourself. But when it comes to issues on the football field, he's got to eat it. That's what he has to learn to do. But I don't think that we're in a position to accuse the offensive line of being, you know, of messing up on purpose when it comes to RG3. They just stink. And they, not, we ain't talking about Trent Williams, of course, but he is a part of that line. But we, they just stink. They have to do a better job. It's that simple. Okay, I hear you. But I think we're together on this bottom line point. If you're the quarterback, you can't even suggest publicly that they stink. It, it totally. won't fly in the locker room. It does you zero totally. good to even suggest that they're not very good. So we his have to take friends, that into account. His best friends on the team should be his offensive line. He should be yeah. treating them to dinner. He should be inviting them over for dinner. He should be buying them watches. He should be Christmas shopping for them. Take care of those who yeah. take care of you. That's a cardinal rule in every That's facet an of life. Yeah, even if they don't take care of you. That's and, right. And again, I'm going to reiterate my point. He was without his left tackle, who's pretty good, and Trent Williams. I'm not sure. It's unknown yet whether Trent will try to play tomorrow night. If he doesn't, RG3 might have another legit, valid excuse. But you can't make it after the game if you stink it up. That's, That's right. the point. We agree. Yeah. We agree there. I know I'm we Captain Obvious here, but the guy needs a change of scenery. I agree with RG3 that. RG3 versus everybody. That should be the T-shirt. Is that game on national TV Saturday? Do we know? Yeah, I think so. Saturday, 7:30. Okay. We if it's not, if it's it not, is. I'm still gonna find it. Yes, we I will think find it's it. Not. I looked, right. but I could be we'll wrong. We'll try yeah. against the Ravens. We'll all be watching that one. Moving on, though, Pittsburgh now has to deal with another suspension this season.